Hi, my name is Lauren Terry from brightsonwhite.com and this is a beginning quilting series for anyone who has used a sewing machine and wants to start quilting but needs a little more help than just tutorials with pictures. I learn better with videos. So this is a shout out to Sage and Ada. I'm creating this quilting series for them and excited to learn with you. First, I want to show you a few things that you'll need to know before you begin any quilting project. Um, You'll need some materials, obviously a sewing machine, but you'll also definitely need an iron and a spot where you can iron. Um, you'll also need a rotary cutter and be careful with these because especially when they're brand new, they're really sharp. Don't cut your finger off like I did in my first couple of years of quilting. Okay, well I only cut off a part of it, but anyway, be careful with these. And then also you'll want um, some kind of a ruler that is shape like this. They've got these at any sewing stores as well as a mat that you can cut it on and it should have a grid on it with um, measurements on either side. Okay, I want to tell you a few things about cutting your fabric for your projects. First, let's pretend like I just got back from the fabric store and they had cut off this half yard of fabric from the bolt um, for me. They're using scissors and we need to make sure that we have a really straight line on the edge of our fabric here so you can begin cutting whatever size you need. So make sure that the top of your fabric is flush or lined up together so it's not um, off at the top. And then you need to press the fabric, iron it. I know that can be annoying at first and you think, oh, I don't need to do that part, but really just give it a quick pressing and that'll really help you. Then you're going to take your ruler, you want to find one of the lines that goes across this way and line it up with the bottom of this of your fabric. Right here, this is at the fold for me. So, and I'm, I kind of like to scoot it over so that I'm not going to waste, I'll waste as little fabric as possible when I'm making this cut. Then you want to place your hand in the center of the ruler or sometimes you can get like a, a special tool that you use to, to hold it down. Um, either way, just be careful and make sure that your finger isn't hanging over the edge. So I never also open up my rotary blade until I'm right about to cut. I always leave this, the safety on. So you can see right now, it's not, um, the blade isn't exposed at the top. I always wait until just before I'm going to cut and I'm going to expose that blade. Place my hand. And then you want to make sure that this ruler doesn't move to the left or to the right while you're cutting. So with your right hand or whatever, whichever hand that you're cutting with, don't push on the ruler. Just try to think about pushing down, not over. So I just push straight down, gently all the way to the top. And you can see there, now we have a really nice straight line to work with. Um, and let's say that I am cutting, I need a six inch cut. So this is a ruler that, um, it is six inches wide and I would go ahead again and I would line up. Now this time I'm going to line up the bottom, but I'm also going to line up all along the side here. So you can see I'm, if it was like this, that's not how I want it. I need to scoot it over so that this is flush all the way down and then this line across is flush. I'm going to place my hand in the center. I'm going to push down and not over. Don't want to move my ruler. All right, there we have our six inches ready to go. Now let's say that you had to cut something that was bigger than six inches or whatever ruler you have. That's why I really like to have two of these because for me, if I add these two together, that's 11 inches and I hardly ever do a project that's bigger than 11 inches. Um, but in a pinch, sometimes I'll try to line this up with one of my grid lines and then I count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And I would line this up with the 13 and then I would make the cut. But what I, what I much prefer to do rather than using the grid of my mat is using the edge of the fabric just because it's going to get you a more accurate cut. So I'm going to make a 10 inch cut right now, show you how to do that. So this is six inches and I'm going to lay that down. So I need four more inches, one, two, three, four. 
So this is a five inch ruler, but I only want to use, I only want to cut four inches. So I'm gonna put four inches of this ruler with the fabric. Oh, sorry, we gotta flip this around. So here's my six inches and here's my four inches. I'm gonna set these next to each other and I'm gonna scoot it over so that only um, four inches are underneath the fabric right here. And then you know what, if I were, I would also walk around. I like cutting with my right hand side. So I've got my six plus four, that makes 10. And I've lined up the bottom and I've lined up all the way on the side. I'm gonna place my hand in the center and then push all the way up. Okay, so you'll get better and better at accurate cutting as you go, but that's one thing that you really want to work on from the beginning because it'll make your projects look really sharp and great. Alright, the last thing I want to show you in this video has to do with the seam allowance. So go ahead and set up your machine, get it threaded, and get the bobbin thread loaded. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, you might need help from someone who's a little more experienced just to show you how to do that part. It's a little different with every machine, so it depends on your machine. And then you need to see how big the seam allowance is going to be just with the default settings on your machine. So in quilting, we want the seam allowance to be one fourth inch. And um, I'm just going to show you. If I turn my machine on and I just start sewing, You can see here that that is definitely not a fourth inch. So this is the seam allowance in between the seam here and the edge of the fabric. And if I take this little ruler and measure it, that's a lot closer to a half an inch, which is not what we want. So on my machine, I can actually move the needle over. And so that's what I do to get my fourth inch seam allowance. But for you, you might need to just decide what are you going to use as the edge? For instance, I line up, I move my needle over, and then I line up the edge of my fabric with the edge of my presser foot. Um, for some people, the needle might be in a place where if you move it over like this, that'll be a fourth inch seam. So just kind of play with it until you find where, where is a fourth inch seam on your machine. And then whenever I sew, I just am always watching right here to see that this is lined up.